video. In the last video, we downloaded and installed Xcode, and now we're gonna actually jump into Xcode, selecting the proper options, um, and actually explaining the options as we go through uh, and getting an idea and walkthrough of the environment that we're gonna come to love. So without further ado, we're gonna open up Xcode, and from this menu, we're gonna click uh, Create a New Xcode Project. And what this does is, this actually gives us all these options of templates, actually. So Apple, um, several years ago, created all these templates for whether we want to make a watch app or an iOS app. We're going to focus on this area, actually. But we're going to basically pick a template, um, which is going to give us a lot of foundational um, stuff, whether it's files or interfaces, uh, to work with. So we have, of course, a tabbed application or a single view application. And we'll explain all of these as we go. But for now, we're going to select this uh, single view application, which, as the name implies, has a single view. So we're gonna select this, hit next. Give it a name of whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it um, project, which isn't the greatest of names. But we're gonna, of course, uh, in this menu, change this to Swift instead of uh, Objective-C, which I was using recently for a different project. So once we do that, you can actually leave these checked or unchecked if you'd like. It creates some additional auto-generated information for you. And files, it's not relevant to our first video, uh, or actually rather, a lot of the first videos. Um, for the team, if you don't have anything here, that's totally fine. For the organization name, uh, you can put an organization name if you have one. If you don't, that's cool too. Um, same for here. This is a backwards uh, website URL, so it's usually prefixed by com, your organization identifier, and the name of your organization. Um, and you can see down here, the bundle ID just tacks on your project name. Uh, in front of that. And your bundle ID is something we'll go over later, but it helps identify your project. So with all of that out of the way, let's uh, let's do that. It's gonna ask us where we wanna save it, and we're just gonna leave it on the desktop for now. Cool, so uh, here we go, here's Xcode. So before we actually start going over stuff, let's make sure this is all the way to the edge of my screen, because it's bothering me that it's not. Cool. So this is the main view of the project that we're getting here. Um, and I wanna go piece by piece into all of this. So this whole big thing here is your main window. So basically when you are writing code, your editor will be here. If you have options you're changing, they'll be here. So just uh, know that there's just one big view. Up here in this corner, we have these three icons which open different parts of the uh, editor and there are command shortcuts which uh, I'll eventually be uh, letting you guys in on uh, to open these but if we select this middle one here we'll see that it opens up this little section down here and this pane actually has our console and our debugger um, so whenever we have like an error or like output if we're printing something it shows up in here generally I like to close the left side of this as I don't really use it this bottom uh, this right side is more important as things get printed in here. Moving on as we open up this left side pane, this is where we get a hierarchy of our project. Notice there's tabs up here as well, so we wanna make sure we're selected on this tab. And we'll get a hierarchy view of our project, uh, how things are formatted in terms of groups, files, um, anything like we have such, such as this assets folder where we're gonna be putting images eventually. Um, et cetera, et cetera. Most of these other tabs are irrelevant with the exception, which I wanna get, let you guys in on, um, of this little uh, exclamation and triangle uh, icon. This is where we're gonna see warnings and errors when we try to build and we uh, might have forgotten to do something in the code or something's broken. The rest of these are important to a degree, but not uh, to our initial videos. So I wouldn't worry about these. So with that being said, let's go over to this last button which is this right button, right pane over here. So this right pane of the window uh, is called your inspector. So in this inspector, we can inspect things about our code, our UI elements, if there's anything available. Generally, there's between one to five tabs up here, depending on the file you click, that change, of course, with every file to give you a variety of options. Just to let you see that in action, if we select, for example, this, we can see that this changed. Um, it'll give us information about this particular file, the type, where it's saved, and 
a bunch of options we can configure. So this actually doesn't have too many options, but when we start designing our user interface with buttons and views and images, a lot of that uh, customization happens in this over here, which is the inspector. Cool, so we can close that and get rid of that. And up here, we can start taking a look at this bar up here, uh, not the toolbar, but the bar that has this play button, this pause button, this drop down, which is a drop down of simulators, um, this section up here, which is letting us know the status of the project. When we compile the project, we get a loading bar in here. In addition to that, of course, we have these buttons over here for controlling the various ways that the entire editor looks. Of course, we just use these to open up the various panes. Uh, and yeah, that's basically the top of it. If we actually head back to this blue folder, which is our actual project, um, and not this yellow one, which represents a group in our project, we'll see that there is a load of information here like uh, this display name, which is the name which actually displays under your app icon on the home screen, this bundle ID, which I briefly mentioned, the version of your app, uh, so on and so forth, the orientations that your application can support, um, if it's universal, if it supports an iPhone only, uh, so on and so forth. So I think that's a pretty sufficient uh, idea of Xcode and where things kind of are. And uh, I'm not going to even try to go into every single menu as there are literally so many things in here that we would probably have a six hour video just brushing over everything. So um, in my experience and the experience of teaching others, we're gonna be touching a lot of aspects of this editor. And as we touch all these different aspects, you eventually start to retain where things are and develop a little bit of a muscle memory of where things are and shortcuts you can take uh, on the keyboard um, that I myself find myself doing sometimes. And uh, some of my coworkers and colleagues will ask how I got to a particular spot and uh, you know, it becomes muscle, muscle memory. So uh, I hope you got a quick idea of where things are and what Xcode looks like and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.